All right, you guys, and we're back with Georgia's Regions Plants and Animals. So this is going to be part two. So what we're going to be doing is going over Georgia's habitats, specifically the plants and animals that are found there. So as you're watching, make sure you pay close attention to the animals and plants found in each region. So make sure you get out your science journal and you can feel free to pause at any time to write down maybe something interesting that you might have not known before. Because this information is going to help you for your next activity. All right, everyone. So the first one we're going to talk about in this video is Georgia's coastal habitat region. How would you describe the coastal plain region? The coastal plain region is located south of the Piedmont region. This is the largest region in Georgia. The land is flat with loamy soil, good for farming, and sandy soil near the ocean. Most of Georgia's farms and crops are in this region. Animals include the brown thrashers, wild hogs, deer, goat fur, tortoises, and seagulls. Plants include crops like peanuts, peaches, and cotton. Also, live oak trees, Spanish moss, and saw palmettos live here. Plants and animals thrive in an environment with flat land and hot climate. Why would the coastal plain habitat be best suited for this animal? So first we have a gopher tortoise. The gopher tortoise is a reptile that burrows deep into the sandy soil of the coastal plains. Using its wide flat claws, they eat primarily plants and herbs that grow low to the ground. They also require a lot of sunlight. The lack of thick forest areas along the coastal plains region is perfect to meet this requirement. Why would the coastal plain habitat be best suited for this animal? So here on our left, we have wild hogs. Wild or feral hogs in Georgia prefer the cover of dense brush for protection but also may be found in mature woodlands and grassy areas. During hot weather, they spend much of their time wallowing in swamps, wetlands, ponds, and streams close to protective cover. Feral hogs are omnivorous and will eat anything from grain to carrion. Plant matter constitutes an important part of their diet. When available, acorns are preferred. They also consume roots of invertebrates, such as centipedes, leeches, earthworms, and crayfish. In certain areas, crops make up a significant portion of their diet. Wild hogs have been known to travel up to seven miles to feed on agricultural crops. Why would this habitat be suited for specific plants? So here we have our live oak. The live oak is a tree that remains green during the winter months, making it look alive instead of dead during the winter. It grows in sandy soils and the leaves are waxy and repel salt spray. This allows it to live near salt water areas such as the Atlantic Ocean or brackish swamp. So here we have another plant and this is called the saw palmetto. The saw palmetto is a common understory plant often found growing thicket-like in southern Georgia and the Florida Peninsula. It is a low spreading palm with stiff leaves and spiny leaf stems. In coastal regions it is an aggressive spreader. It is tolerant of salt spray and drought and is an excellent choice for coastal landscapes. What are the features of animals that allow them to live and thrive in this region? Well, for one, we have webbed feet for walking in sand along the coast. Then we have birds have long legs, thin coats or skin to survive harsh, hot climates, claws to dig in loamy or sandy soil for homes, and animals can migrate over large areas for food or shelter. 
what are the features of plants that allow them to live and thrive in this region? So first we have plants can grow in sandy soil close to the ocean. Waxy leaves can repel salt spray. Plants grow quickly. Drought resistant plants can store water. Thin bark to survive hot conditions. Long root systems spread out wide or go deep into the ground to absorb water. During a fire, while above ground portions of grasses may, of grasses may perish, the root portions survive to sprout again. And that's grasses. Extensive root systems prevent grazing animals from pulling roots out of the ground. And soft stems enable plants to bend in the wind. All right, boys and girls, now going back to the beginning, I want us to think. Were any of the animals in this coastal habitat region the same from the mountain region? Were any of the plants the same? Throughout this video, I want you to think about why that is. Why are they not the same? All right, boys and girls, so now we're going to be talking about Georgia's marsh and swamp habitat region. So already looking at these photos, how different they are when compared to the previous three regions. How would you describe the swamp and marsh region? The marsh and swamp region is located in the southeast corner of Georgia. The swamp is known as the Okefenokee. The climate is hot, wet, and humid year-round. The land and soil is very soft. Animals in this region include snakes, alligators, snapping turtles, deer, tall, wadding birds like herons and storks, and bullfrogs. Some plants include cypress trees, Spanish moss, water lilies, and pitcher plants. The plants and animals thrive in an environment with hot, wet weather. So let's go ahead and look at our first animal. So we have an alligator. The alligator is a reptile that prefers fresh water and brockish, which is a mix of salt and freshwater areas. It has a large tail that is used primarily for propelling it through the water, and it is typically a dark black color, which allows it to blend in with the dark muddy waters of the marsh. Baby alligators have yellow bands on their back, which allows them to blend in with reeds and grasses. Alligators eat fish, smaller reptiles, and sometimes larger animals. Let's go ahead and look at our next animal. So we have a herons, or herons. Never far from the water, herons inhabit marshes, lakes, rivers, bays, beaches, mangroves, and other wetlands across the United States. Herons are usually gray, though a white subspecies can be found in Florida. They have long wings and legs and a long bill that tapers to the point. Usually hunting while standing in the water, they spot prey by sight, feeding on such diverse fare as fish, insects, crustaceans, amphibians, reptiles, and small mammals. So now, why would this habitat be suited for specific plants? So here we have three plants that we're going to be going over. So the first plant that we have is the pitcher plant. So the muddy soil of the marsh is nutrient poor. Therefore, many plants must rely on getting nutrients from other sources, including animals. The pitcher plant attracts small insects with its smell. When the insects land inside the long stalks of the plants, they are forced down by small inner hairs of the plant inside the stalk and the animal drowns in a sticky fluid and the plant digests the soft parts of the insect. So here we have our pitcher plant. Then we have our water lilies, which are going to be right down here. So water lilies, the fragrant water lily is a floating leafed plant that grows rooted in murky or silty sediments in water up to six or up to six to seven feet deep. It prefers quiet water such as ponds, lake margins, and slow streams. 
And lastly, we have cypress trees. The bald cypress is a large, slow-growing tree which frequently reaches 100 to 120 feet in height and 3 to 6 feet in diameter. It develops knees that grow above water, providing additional support. The bald cypress is generally restricted to very wet soils consisting of muck, clay, or fine sand where moisture is abundant and fairly permanent. Its thin bark offers little protection against fire, and during years of drought, when swamps are dry, fire kills great numbers of cypress plants or cypress trees. So here we go. They're right here, and you can see their knees are just above the water. What are the features of animals that allow them to live and thrive in this region of Georgia? So we have birds have long legs and long beaks, waterproof skin, animals can live in both land and water, and webbed feet for moving in water. So these are just some of the features that animals have that allow them to live in this region. What are the features of plants that allow them to live and thrive in this region of Georgia? So we have a couple here. So we have flexible stems with floating leaves, lilies, that can withstand water movement. Floating leaves increase exposure to sunlight. Deep roots and roots that can grow underwater to anchor plants. Plants that thrive in wet conditions. Plants endure extreme variations in temperature above and below water. Grow roots above water for additional support. Plants in poor soil get nutrients from other sources, including animals. That was the pitcher plants. Tall plants that fluctuate to water levels. So we have cattails. Height means that they are unlikely to ever be completely submerged during flooding. And finally, some plants produce seeds that can float. So now I want you to go back and think about the coastal plain region and the Martian swamps and compare that to when we talked about the mountain region and the Piedmont region. Did any of those regions have animals that were the same? Did any of those regions have plants that were the same? Now, Throughout this video, you should have been thinking, why can certain plants and animals live in one region and can't thrive and live in another? As we move on talking about adaptations and we talk about climate and just the different regions that we have, we're going to be exploring that question a little bit further. So now, you're going to be using this activity from the first video and the second video to complete your next activity.